Hey guys, it's Ben. Welcome back to the channel. The 2022 Oscars are done. They are finished, which means it's time to look ahead to 2023. Yes, no breaks for Oscar predictions. It is time for me to give my extremely early 2023 Oscar predictions. But first, I thought I would do a quick little video reacting to my predictions from early 2022 to see how many of my early predictions came true. I have no clue, I haven't looked at the video since I did it, how many I got right. So, let's dive into it, let's find out, let's see how wrong my predictions were. Okay, here we are, May 2021 predictions. Let's see how well I did. All right, guys, the 2021 Oscars have We're gonna finished. skip through all of they this boring intro. Shut up. Channel. Okay, Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley is an interesting one. This was the one that everybody kind of thought was gonna make it earlier in the year. Everybody just assumed, oh, Guillermo del Toro, stacked cast, it's gonna make it. And obviously it did end up making it into the 10, but it barely did. It barely made it into the 10. It was actually a bit of a surprise. So, so far we're one for one, but uh, that was probably like number 10 to win on the best picture 10. Um, number two, two Tragedy Macbeth. Macbeth. So I remember this. this is a I remember um, holding on. I remember really thinking that Tragedy Macbeth was was going to be a contender. And then slowly, over the course of the year, I just kind of thought, really, is a black and white uh, Shakespeare movie going to get nominated? Obviously, it was not, but it did get a number of nominations. So I wasn't completely wrong on this one. But number two, next, I got oh, Soggy, Soggy Bottoms, Bottoms at number three. Hall. Okay, so this was the one that. Uh, Everybody thought it was called Soggy Bottom for the longest time. Um, again, not one of the higher up on the best picture likelihood to win. Did that sentence make sense? Not one of the movies out of the best picture 10 that was most likely to win. But uh, it did get nominated and it got a bunch of nominations. I was right. So, so far, what is that? Two for three? Two for three so far. Two for three is not bad. Next, I have the House of Gucci. Okay, I House of Gucci. Okay, <laughs> that's another one that didn't turn out. To be fair though, like, come on, Ridley Scott, like, Drama, you got like this stacked cast. This was like supposed to be his big contender for the year. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody kind of had this one up pretty high on their list. Lady Gaga was obviously really pushing for that for that win. Didn't even get nominated at the end of the day. House of Gucci got a couple noms, right? Like costumes or makeup, something, but didn't do well. Dune, Dune at number five. Even. Okay, so Dune um, obviously was nominated and won like what six Oscars it won a lot It was another one that everybody kind of assumed was gonna get in and I'm happy that it did in the Heights. Okay in the Heights in number six I remember there was a there was a period where everybody thought in the Heights was gonna get in because uh, It was one of the most critically acclaimed movies of the year at that point But this this one ended up being one of those films that uh, lost all of its momentum, lost all of the, the steam that it had because of uh, its early release date. I think that's a large reason why it didn't it didn't pan out when it came to awards. And also the fact that um, it didn't really perform super well financially. So it just, everybody kind of forgot about this movie. It just kind of came and went. And then also West Side Story kind of replaced it as the musical of the year to be nominated. So for all those reasons in the Heights uh, just kind of slipped under the radar. But at this point in the year, I remember at this point of the year, everybody thought In the Heights was was gonna be nominated, even though it hadn't even come out yet at this point. Just the early buzz from the movie had everybody putting it high up, and clearly I did as well. Will it ride that hype all okay. the way? So I was a little iffy on season. it. That's a good question. As of right now, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on it. I think it will. See, I was a little hesitant. I should have kind of stuck with my gut. I kind of gave in to the, the peer pressure. West Side Story. Okay, so West Side Story obviously did get in. Um, one of my favorite personal uh, Best Picture nominees from last year. It's a Steven Spielberg j musical. I don't know why I had this at number seven. That's somewhat low for what this movie was, but I think I was doubting it at this point in the year because it was a remake and uh, didn't look like from the trailers, like it was doing a lot new. It was, wasn't was really bringing much new to the table. So I think I was kind of unsure of it because of that. Let's see what I have to say. It is a remake. And that's one thing which kind of makes me doubt it a little bit. Yeah, but. exactly. Okay, so don't look up, um, obviously another one. So what is that like? Is that like five that I have right? Five of eight? Five for eight is not too bad so far. Um, but obviously this one did get in. One of the more controversial picks 
um, and one of the more, most controversial films overall from last year. Also, the script was leaked, kind of, and some people were able to read it. Oh, I remember there was a whole thing going on with the script in this movie that people, the script leaked and people didn't think it, it was very good. That's interesting. I, I totally forgot about that, but yeah, I think I was doubting it a little bit because of that and because it was... Uh, Adam McKay was saying stuff about how it was more comedic, which it is a more comedic movie than his last couple, so. But it still, it still made it in. It still made it in. The power of Adam McKay. We can't doubt him, guys. We'll see. Next, I have Eternal, oh, so. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that's my big, that's my big, uh, that was my risky pick. I remember thinking, like, ooh, I'm gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna pick Eternals. I really thought I had a shot, guys. I don't know why. I think... I mean, to be fair, like the MCU has proven that it can get nominated. Black Panther was nominated. So after that and all the early buzz, like there was a lot of like buzz for this movie. Like the people at Marvel really loved this movie. There, there was things that were coming out saying that they thought it was their best movie ever. So I was, I was taking that. I was hearing that, looking at the trailer and how beautiful it looked and how different it looked. I just thought it was going to be like a, a fresh new different feel for the mcu i thought it was going to have a lot more like messaging and symbolism and you know stuff that the oscars will will grab onto in many ways it was the movie was what i was expecting it to be and i personally really liked the movie but uh obviously not at all uh a best picture contender and marvel's worst received film ever which is crazy to me. Like, come on, guys. Eternals, the worst? I'll stand by Eternals. I think it's a great movie. So you can you can come at me in the comments section. Also, Chloe Zhao had just one for Nomadland. Okay, let's not forget that. What was my number 10? Was my number 10? Okay, next I got Next Goal Wins. Next Goal Wins. Okay, a movie that didn't even come out. I think I had that on my list for the past two years. And I'm going to have it on my list for this year. Spoiler alert. But this is a film that just, like, does it exist? I... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm starting to doubt its existence at this point. We haven't seen anything from this movie. It's just wrapped filming years ago, but it's just been silent. Feels like it might be like a TIFF release kind of for this year. So hopefully we'll actually see this movie this year and we'll see if it is at all a contender like we've been suspecting it is for the past couple of years. But you kind of got to kind of write off this one because, you know, didn't come out. What was my number 11? Last Night in Soho is my number 11. Okay, so so these we're, we're just going downhill, guys. Last Night in Soho. I mean, Edgar Wright was never a big player at the Oscars, but I thought that this might be the movie to get him in, but I don't know why I thought that. It's a, it's like a bit of a horror movie. It's a genre movie. This wasn't the one for, for Edgar Wright to be recognized for. We're going to fly through these at this point. 12, we got The Last Duel. Okay, another... Ridley Scott movie that did not get any nominations, though it should have. The Last Duel is a great movie, one of my favorite from the last year. Card Counter, oh man, guys, we are going downhill. We are going downhill. Card Counter obviously was not recognized and like, did that even come out last year? Like, I, I forgot that movie existed. French Dispatch, number 14. Um, seems like the, the Grand Buddhist Pest Hotel was kind of his like career achievement movie and that's why it was recognized so much. I don't know. Uh, how much his future movies will be recognized by the Academy. I just want to find another one. Okay, there we go. 15 Power of the Dog. Wow. Okay, so what was the front runner for a, a long time was Power of the Dog. A lot of people had this up pretty high on their list right off the bat. I kind of doubted it. I don't know why. I just, I didn't know a lot about it. Jane Campion hadn't made a movie in so long. I didn't know what she was going to bring, but obviously this was a huge contender for Netflix. Almost one best picture. So 16 Mass, Rip Mass, um, a movie that a lot of people were rooting for, but you know, Bleecker Street didn't, didn't handle its release well, like everybody feared. Seven, A Journal for Jordan. Another movie that feels like like it didn't exist, like it didn't even come out. That movie just slipped right under the radar. Nobody saw that movie. Set 18, I have Coda. So there we go, our best picture winner for the year, Coda. I have it 18. I mean, at least it was in my 20. At least it was in my 20. Um, I, I didn't really think this was gonna happen, honestly. It had premiered at Sundance and um, a lot of people loved it, but it was just kind of thought of as the Sundance crowd pleaser that wasn't really gonna materialize at the Oscars. But at this point in the year, and honestly, it took me a while to even think it was gonna get nominated at all. And at this point, obviously, I, I didn't think it was gonna happen. I still can't believe the late surge that Coda had. It's crazy. And that at 19, obviously not at all a movie that was going to be nominated. Tick, Tick, Boom, I put at 20. Tick, Tick, Boom um, was right outside of the 10, but obviously didn't get nominated. What am I missing from the 10? I, I'm missing, oh, King Richard. I haven't mentioned that yet. King Richard. Is there a couple more? Is there any more that I'm missing? I don't know. 
Three has 3,000 Years of Longing, which uh, hasn't even come out yet, but it's premiering soon. Blonde, another movie that hasn't come out yet. King Richard, there we go. So King Richard I had all the way to 23. A movie that I did not expect to be nominated, a sports biopic. I thought it was gonna be a, uh, maybe a performance showcase for Will Smith, but nothing more, but obviously it was nominated and one of my favorites from last year as well. Eyes of Tammy Faye, another one of my favorite movies from last year, but didn't get any uh, best picture buzz, but Jessica Chastain won. So at least I had that. And then I just put a whole bunch of other movies on the screen. What did I put? Green Knight. Do you have an Hanson? Oh boy. Harder They Fall. Nope. And Kanto, which blew up. Red, White, and Water. Anyways, those are my predictions. I don't know what I missed here. What did I miss? So we had, so I predicted Nightmare Alley. So in my, in my top 10, I got one, two, three, uh, four, five. I got five out of 10. Five out of 10 in my top 10. So not great, 50%. I mean, like, hey, I'll take it, I'll take it. 50% of my top 10 ended up getting nominated. Will I do better this year? Will I get more than five? That's, that's the goal, okay? We gotta get at least six out of 10 right for my 2023 predictions. Come back to the channel very soon where I will be sharing with you my early 2023 predictions. Super excited to begin a new Oscar award season. We got a bunch of great movies coming out this year. A lot of exciting contenders. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you'll get notified when that video is uploaded. Thank you for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed. Follow me over on Twitter and Letterboxd for all of my movie takes over there. And I will see you in the next video. See ya.